already know what it is. It's Thug Notes, bitches. And this week, we're getting serious about the bread with The Merchant of Venice by William Shakespeare. Noble brother Bassanio got it bad for a girl who got as much paper as she got that booty. Mm. Portia of Belmont. Dude want to put a ring on it, but he blown all his cheddar, and now he ain't got the ends to get an uptown girl like her to holler back. So Bassanio hit up his boy Antonio, a hood rich merchant from the block, and be like, say, bruh, think you can front me some cash money so I can get my woo on with this banging honey? You know I'll hit you back, man. Antonio like, no dice, bruh. I'm cashed out because all my bread invested in some ships that are flowing in the sea. But look, I'll cover your ass if you can find a lender. Up in Belmont, mm. Portia straight bugging because her daddy's will say she got to marry whichever dude picks the right chest out of three. One gold, one silver, and one lead. Man, what kind of shit is that? Portia ain't feeling none of them mm. gumby looking mofos trying to hit it. But then her main homegirl, Narissa, say maybe that legit player Bassanio will drop by. He's so fly. Back in V-Town, Bassanio hit up a Jewish moneylender named Shylock and tell him Antonio gonna guarantee a loan of three G's. Thing is, Shylock got beef with Antonio cause Shy Guy don't like the way Antonio do business and always be hating on his Jewish roots. So he agreed to lend him the cash under one condition. If Bassanio can't pay up in three months, Shylock gonna take a pound of Antonio's flesh. Man, that's steep, bruh. Antonio say, all right though. So Bassanio get that cash money and peace out to Belmont with his boy Graciano. While Shylock busy plotting, his daughter Jessica run off and marry Antonio's homie, Lorenzo. Damn. <sighs> in Belmont, Portia drowning in a bunch of lame ass busters all jonesing to get a crack at that ass. But first, they gotta choose from them three chests. The first two scrubs pick the gold and silver, but eh, that ain't gonna unlock them legs, player. Then Bassanio drop into town, roll up to the scene, and pick the lead chest like a boss. Ding, 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 ding! That's right, boy. Portia, all yours, man. Mm. So Portia give him a ring and say, you best not ever take this thing off. Damn, girl. Mm. I right. Graciano say he and Arissa in love, too. So they suggest a double wedding, because go big or go home. Right? Just as they bout to pop bottles, they get word that Antonio's ships are lost at sea, so he ain't got the money to pay Shylock back. When Bassanio hear this, he like, shit, I gotta bust ass home and save my boy. Portia give her boo some fat stacks to pay off the debt, but she got another plan she cooking up. She and Arissa gonna dress up as dudes and swing over to Venice. Up at court, Bassanio offers Shylock six big ones, twice the original loan. But Shylock like, nah, blood, I want that pound of flesh. The Duke of Venice is looking for some advice on the case, so out comes a legal whiz named Balthazar. But on the real, it's Portia dressed up like a dude. She's still fine, though. Girls start talking about how Shylock need to show mercy, but he ain't feeling it. So Antonio ready to get carved up real good, but then Portia like, hold up. Yeah, the law say you can have a pound of his flesh, but it don't say you can draw any of his blood, blood. Spill a single drop, and your crib and all your money belong to the law. So good luck with that. Shylock like, Psh, fine, I'll just take the cash. But Portia say, uh-uh, not so fast, playboy. Since you tried to ice a Venetian citizen, you gotta give up all your property. Have to the state, have to Antonio, and then the Duke get to decide whether you live or die. The Duke pity the fool and let him walk away. Antonio say, I right, son, I'll give you your cash back on two conditions. One, you gotta become a Christian, and two, you leave all your Benjamins to Lorenzo and Jessica after you die. Huh. Shylock like, all right, fine, and peace is out. Not knowing Balthazar is really his woman, but Sanyo try to throw her some mad gratitude. But Portia like, yo, playboy, I want that ring. Mm -hmm. And Narissa, disguised as Balthazar's right-hand man, say the same thing to Graciano. Both boys hand over the bling and head back to the crib where Portia and Narissa be chilling. Yo, where the hell are your rings? But before shit go too far, the girls reveal that them boys just got punk, and it's all good. In the end, Lorenzo all geeked to know that after Shylock bite the dust, he and Jessica gonna be buried in Benjamins. And Antonio get word that his ship's all good, so his paper's still legit. 
Phew. My man Willie Shakes is so gangster that when he busts a mad lyrical flow, it changed the way people talk for all time. You ever heard of somebody say that they're gonna take a pound of flesh if they ain't get paid? Yep, it came from this play right here. Or have you ever heard of someone who's shady with money called a shyster? Yeah, man, that came from our boy Shylock. And well, that's where stuff starts getting messy. See, this play is one of the most notorious of all the Bad Bards works. What's the beef? Well, open up your ears and soak this game up. Most scholars say that the main jam of this text is that holy rolling with Jesus make your thugging all righteous. But if you ain't, like say you Jewish, then your morals are way out of whack. Now keep in mind, this mess was written back in the day when this kind of prejudice against foreigners was going down on the reg. See, Antonio rapping all the virtuous things Christianity preaching, like showing mad love to your neighbor. Antonio's wallet always open to his homies, he never charges any points on top of the principal, and dude offers up his own life just to get his boys back. Whereas Shylock's supposed to rep all the crooked morals you might have when you sipping on that man of Shevitz instead of that Jesus juice. For one, Shylock only got one thing on his mind, stacking paper off other people's problems. And when homies ask him to show a little mercy up at court, he would rather see Antonio bleed out and die like a bitch. So was the bard really throwing shade at Jews, or was he playing a most subtle game? If you look close, it ain't just Shylock who acted shady. Everybody got that side, whether they Christian, Jewish, or whatever. For example, is Shakespeare really saying Christians are more legit towards their fellow man, then why is Antonio always talking about Shylock and calling him a dog? Cause on the real, Shylock ain't the only one on that vengeance grind. Antonio's show is hell don't turn the other cheek when he makes Shylock convert and tell him how he's supposed to spend his money. No matter what faith you represent, you might want to dole out a little payback. Like Shylock say, if a Jew wrong a Christian, what is his humility? Revenge. If a Christian wrong a Jew, what should his sufferance be by Christian example? Why? Revenge. And how about that boy Bassanio? Everybody always running their mouths about Shylock being obsessed with the bread, but why do Bassanio got it bad for Portia? Cause she rich, man! As he say, and Belmont is a lady richly left. Portia ain't no saint either. Girl don't want to marry the Prince of Morocco just cause of the color of his skin. He's a prince! If I could bid the fifth welcome with so good heart as I can bid the other four farewell, I should be glad of his approach. If he had the condition of a saint and the complexion of a devil, I had rather he should shrive me than wive me. That's some bullshit. But it don't stop there. Yeah, Antonio's a pretty generous brother, willing to sacrifice himself for his homie and shit. But he never shut the hell up about it. It's like he's trying to get people to talk about him like he's freaking Jesus. I am a tainted weather of the flock. Meat is for death. The weakest kind of fruit drops earliest to the ground. And so let me. You cannot better be employed, Bassanio, than to live still and write mine epitaph. Is he really as selfless as he say? Or do he just have a big ass head? So look. There ain't no doubt this play got the stank of more prejudiced times all up on it. But was old Willie really saying that religion defined the way you treat another brother? Or did he pull a fast one by suddenly calling out them Elizabethans on their bull Either way, your boy Sparky know that anyone can have a serious hater streak to him, no matter what religion they represent. Yo, thanks for chilling with your boy. Keep it real up in the library, y'all. Peace. Hey, y'all, thanks for watching. Want to check out a Shakespearean spin on a modern tale? Go to audible.com slash thugnotes and download William Shakespeare's Star Wars by Ian Desch. It's the classic tale from a galaxy far, far away we told as a Shakespearean play. It's pretty dope. Audiobooks are a great way to make time fly, whether you're on a soul-crushing commute or pumping iron at the gym. Audible makes it easy to enjoy an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original audio shows, comedy, and more. No matter where you are, just go to audible.com slash thugnotes to start a free 30-day trial. When you sign up, you can pick William Shakespeare's Star Wars, the Thug Notes book, or any book you want. Download it for free, and it's yours to keep forever. For more about Audible and to start your 30-day free trial with a free audio book, Go to audible.com slash thugnotes to sign up. Thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video.
we've got lots of great stuff coming, so don't miss out. Click here to go to our channel page and subscribe. Catch you next time, our well-read ballers. Peace.